to proceed, my dear respected brothers and sisters. On the authority of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, بينما نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الثياب شديد سواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد He said while we were sat one day with the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم there appeared before us a man dressed in extremely white clothes with very black hair no traces of travel were visible on him and none of us knew him. He sat close to the Prophet ﷺ and rested his knees against the Messenger ﷺ's knees. And he said, O oh Muhammad, athbirni anil Islam. Tell me about Islam. And so the Messenger ﷺ answered, Islam is that you should testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his Messenger. And to perform salah and pay zakah, fast during Ramadan and perform hajj to the house if you are able to. And so he said, Sadaqt, you've spoken the truth. Umar said, we were astonished how he could question him and then affirm the answer as being correct. So he said, Akhbirni anil iman, tell me about iman, what's iman? And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, to believe in Allah and His angels and His books and His messengers. And the last day, and Qadr, divine decree, it's good and it's evil. And he said, Sadaqt, you've spoken the truth. Then he said, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ الْإِحْسَانِ Tell me about Ihsan, what is Ihsan? And so the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ that you worship Allah as though you can see him. For if you cannot see him, surely he can see you. And so he said, ask me about the hour, uh, tell me about the hour, the, the day of resurrection. He said, the question knows no more than the questioner. He said, then tell me about its signs. And he said that the slave girl will give birth to her mistress and you will find the barefoot naked and destitute herdsmen of sheep competing with one another in building lofty buildings. Then the man left and Umar remained for some time. And so the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Oh Umar, do you know who the questioner was? He said, Umar said, Allah and his messenger know best. And he said, فَإِنَّهُ جِبْرِيلُ أَتَاكُمْ يُعَلِّمُكُمْ دِينَكُمْ It was Jibreel. He came to teach you your religion. And so this hadith, dear brothers and sisters, forms the basis, the foundation of our deen, of Islam. What we owe Allah, what we must believe in, how we should perfect our, or the fact that we must perfect our worship rather, knowing that this world has an end, an expiration, which only Allah wa ta'ala knows its date. But there are signs in order for us to heed and to prepare. Islam and Iman are normally synonymous when they're mentioned individually, but when they're mentioned together, they have distinct differences. And Jibri and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam define these differences. Islam being the pillars, defined by its pillars, which is worship. And worship, dear brothers and sisters, the field of study of worship is fiqh, jurisprudence, law, the halal and the haram, what is makruh, Disliked what is a mustahab or sunnah or mandub, what is encouraged, what is liked, and what is mubah, what is permissible. This is the study of halal and haram is found in the books of fiqh, in the study, the discipline of fiqh, governing your relationship with Allah. This, the vertical relationship, and then the horizontal relationship between you and mankind, between you and the created world, the interactions that we, uh, uh, the interactions that take place between us and people and the living and non-living world on a daily basis. Iman, which is what we believe in. Allah, who is Allah? What are the qualities necessary to Allah, what are the qualities impossible in His right, and what is possible? The angels, what are the angels? What are they made of? What is our belief in them? What 
qualifies a book to be a book of Allah's? What qualifies a messenger? What are the conditions that, we must, that, must, that must be found in a messenger? What is divine decree? What is qadr? All of this is found in the study of aqeedah. All of these terms we are familiar with, dear brothers and sisters. Ihsan may be a term that we are not as familiar with. Ihsan which means to beautify something and to make something perfect was defined by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as worshipping Allah as though you can see him. That is actually the definition. And when that is not accomplished, then know that he can see you. But knowing that he can see you is not Ihsan. It is the level preceding Ihsan. It is the level that aids you and enables you to attain Ihsan. Ihsan is the evidence of faith. It's the reflection of Allah's qualities in you in the human form. It is the emulation of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ihsan, dear brothers and sisters, has synonymous terms through, within our Islamic tradition from suluk and tarbiyah and akhlaq and what is more commonly known, what is more commonly known as among people, tazkiyah, purification. Dear brothers and sisters, all of the sciences of the religion have received a great share of attention by scholars over the ages. They've been systemized and taught in a methodical manner. You learn the basics. No, nobody jumps to becoming a scholar overnight. Your teacher, your, your, in fact, our parents first. Our first teachers were our parents. They taught us how to pray. And we're taught basic, our, our basic fundamentals of faith and belief. And that is sufficient for the person. That is sufficient for the Muslim to meet Allah, absolved of any wrong, of any blame. That is sufficient. If a person wishes to excel, then there is a curriculum that they must follow. And so too, uh, and, 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 and so that step-by-step -step, uh, uh, gradualism in reaching and attaining the high and lofty stations of knowledge is a method no two people disagree on, except those who believe that they can self-teach themselves to become scholars, self-taught scholar, and those people beware of them. For they are more dangerous to us than a self-taught doctor. Doctor, where did you graduate from? Where did you study? Where did you practice? Oh, uh, I taught myself on YouTube. Oh, I'm never going to go near a doctor like that. But we go to people who claim knowledge. And they are self-taught. They read Wikipedia pages, entries. And they made notes from YouTube videos. And they are now scholars and muftis. And so beware of those people. When it comes to tazkiyah, dear brothers and sisters, perfection of our worship, we generally do not give it the same importance as we give the hard science, sciences as, they've become, uh, as they have uh, come to be known. Now we know, of course, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives all the sins, regardless of how large or small they are, the major and the minor, how frequent or infrequent we commit them. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala forgives all sins because we are prone to committing sins. And making mistakes. And he said, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, meaning, O oh Muhammad, O oh my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is He who is forgiving and merciful. We know, dear brothers and sisters, that this is not an open invitation to, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to sin as much as we like. But rather, it's a reminder that we should never tire of asking Allah for forgiveness because He does not tire from, from forgiving us. He does not turn His servants away. But this isn't the highest degree of faith. To sin then repent, then to sin then to repent, then to sin then to repent. Continuously. Because the, 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 the principle, in fact, the default is for us to not sin. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَفَعَلُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Whatever I forbade you from doing, then refrain from it. 
The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't leave an open door for sinning. He said, if I, if I told you this is haram, if I tell you not to do this, don't do it. But what I have told you to do, do what it, what you do from it what you can. The minimum is the obligations, of course, because that is qualified by other hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in terms of the sunnahs, fasting sunnah fast, for, uh, 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 and to voluntary charity, and voluntary prayer, and, 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 and the sunnah are, are, are innumerable. Do what you can. But what is, the, what is the default? The default is not to sin, not to commit any sins. Now, that's easy to say, isn't it? But the reality is, it's incredibly difficult to achieve. And it's because our attention has been shifted away from this third dimension, one third of our religion, which is Ihsan, Ihsan or Tazkiyah. Now we said that Tazkiyah means purification. Purification. Imagine with me, if you, if you can, a cup. The cup is dirty and is stained from the inside and you wish to clean it. And so you pour water into the cup. And after every sip of water you pour, you throw some dirt in it too. And you continue this cycle of pouring water then adding dirt and pouring water and adding dirt. The result is the persistent stubborn stains remain in the cup and they are not washed away, they are not eroded, they are not erased. Now, imagine with me, if you can, pouring water into that cup pouring water in that, in, into that cup, but not putting any dirt into it afterwards. Now, over time, not immediately, of course, the cup will become cleaner and purer until those persistent stains are erased, leaving no trace. Now, the analogy is clear for all of us and doesn't require uh, explaining. Both methods are tazkiyah. Both methods, they are tazkiyah. But one is more effective than the other. And so which one should we strive to, uh, uh, to exercise and manifest in our practices? We should, of course, try to, uh, uh, try to eliminate the installment of the sin, the impurity to start with. My dear respected brothers and sisters, many of us are stuck in this cycle of dirtying than washing then dirtying then washing and many of us are desperate to break this cycle like extreme diets we make unrealistic uh, we make unrealistic commitments such as saying one morning you wake up and you say i will never disobey allah ever again and you make a firm covenant and um, and you make a strong commitment never to sin again never to sin never to sin again which is impossible of course and so what happens a day or two might pass, three of your, if you're lucky, and then you relapse and commit a sin which you made an oath that you would never commit. And so what happens is you become disheartened. You lose hope. You despair. You despair not only in yourself. You may say, oh, there's no good in me. You may even say, I am destined for this. And you blame the divine Qadr. Qadr, you don't know. The problem isn't with you. The problem is definitely not with the qadr. The problem is with the method. You chose, you chose an incorrect method. You made unrealistic uh, expectations and, and unrealistic targets which are short -term, for the short term. Go to any coach. Go to any mentor who will help you with your development. Self-development or your business. Anything. You have a one-year plan and a three-year plan and a five-year plan. And if you are ambitious... A 10-year plan. So, shouldn't it be the same for our spiritual development? Because it is the same with all of the sciences of the Sharia, ah, by the way. The student goes to the Sheikh and the Sheikh says, This year, you must do one, two, three. And in three years' time, you must accomplish one, two, three. And in five years, you need to have this. And in 10 years, if you are a hard-working student, you should reach this level of knowledge. It's done in every single field. But why is it that when it comes to hard graft, we assume that tazkiyah will be a dua and we're done. Ramadan set for the year. Tazkiyah is not about huge leaps, my dear respected brothers and sisters, but rather small, consistent steps. It 
It's not a new age coaching method, rather it's the prophetic method. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ahabbul a'mali ila Allahi adwamuha wa inqal. The acts most pleasing to Allah are the most consistent, even if they are small. Now, brothers and sisters, just like there is no one single legal school of thought, there's no one madhab in fiqh, and nor will there ever be one madhab. There, are, there is also not one madhab, one school of thought in tazkiyah. But they all share any sheikh you go to, any mentor, any coach, they must all have the same basic principles. And the most important one is gradualism. The mouth earns hasanat and also incurs sins. So too does the ear, so too do the eyes, so too do the hands, so, so too do the feet and the stomach and the private parts. What should you do then? Start with the repeat offender, the most frequent offender. It may be your eyes. You want to break the habit of looking at what is haram. And so start with logging your sins. If you start a diet or you want to change your lifestyle, they tell you first count your calories, everything that you eat, just so you know what you're, what you're consuming. I exercise, but I'm not losing weight. Okay, but what are you eating? What are you putting in? Stop looking at how I'm going to burn it off. Huh? The hasanat to replace the sins. Yes, that's good. But why sinning first? Why major sins first? So, log your sins. And then, make a firm commitment. In one month, I will break this habit. Okay, I fail, I start again. I fail, I start again. Okay, what if I continue to fail and I never reach the term? A month, which it takes a month to break or to make a habit. And that's one of the wisdoms behind fasting for the month of Ramadan. I fail over and over again, then know that there is something stopping you. It's your environment. It's your friends. It's the company that you keep. So it's something outside of you which you must change. And then you move on to the next organ, and then the next. And with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after time you will master your senses and control your nafs and attain a minimum state of purification. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see his servant strive in his cause. And his pleasure is the most worthy cause. Is the most worthy cause. And so he helps. He doesn't just leave you just to do the hard graft and he doesn't assist you. Because it's impossible without his help. And that's why he said, Jalla Jalaluhu, in the Hadith Qudusi, إِذَا تَقَرَّبَ الْعَبْدُ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ إِلَيْهِ ذِرَاعًا وَإِذَا تَقَرَّبَ مِنِّي ذِرَاعًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ بَاعًا وَإِذَا أَتَانِي مَشْيًا أَتَيْتُهُ هَرْوَلَةً He said, my Lord, uh, uh, he said, if my slave comes nearer to me, comes near to me, a hand span, I come near to him, a cubit. And if he comes near to me, a, nearer to me, a cubit, for a cubit, I go nearer to him with an, an, an arm span. And if he comes to me walking, I come to him running. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, start, put your foot on that path, make the move towards Allah, because he moves to us faster than our moves are to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rid us of all sins and to aid us against the shaitan and against our nafs. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وبعد brothers and sisters these days tazkiyah has been relegated to the level of fadila virtue it's something superfluous like extra in the religion sunna rather than the obligation which it is which it is Allah Taala he said قد أفلح من زكاها وقد خاب من دساها he has succeeded who purifies it meaning his self and he has failed who instills it, meaning with sins and corruption. There is only one opposite to success. Is there more than one opposite to success? You either succeed or you fail. There's one opposite to success and that is failure. And so the one who fails to purify himself has lost and has, uh, has lost dearly. We said that tazkiyah, like any knowledge, has degrees. And like any knowledge, for you, to, for you to gain that knowledge, you must possess prerequisites, conditions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the opening chapter of his glorious book, 
in Surah Al-Fatiha laid out for us these conditions. And so because time is, uh, 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 time is against us, we will go through them in, in, uh, very briefly. Allah Ta'ala starts his, uh, starts, opens his book with Bismillah. First, you must know who are you seeking? Who are you purifying yourself for? Whose pleasure are you seeking? Allah, Bismillah. And Allah identified himself straight away. Who is Allah? He is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Meaning, don't worry. Meaning, I have all of your needs. Meaning, I am merciful. I have mercy on all the creation and I have special mercy on the believers. And then, because he is Allah, he deserves praise. And so he said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. So now I know my relationship to Allah. Where do I stand with Allah? He's the Lord of all the worlds. He's my Lord. He's my master. Meaning I'm his servant. I'm his slave. Okay, what kind of master is he? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. In case you forgot, he is the most merciful, the most beneficent, the especially merciful, the compassionate. And also, Maliki Yawmiddin. He tells us that there's an end to this life after which there'll be a reckoning. And he's the king of that day. He is the owner. He is the one who judges, but he judges with the truth. Wallahu yaqudhi bil haqq. Walladheena yadu'una min dunihi la yaqudhuna bi shay. And Allah judges with truth. While those they invoke besides him do not judge with anything. So after knowing Allah, the seeker, the seeker's next obligation is the same as any, as they say, it's the same as the condition for any good deed. Intention. To purify one's intention. Why am I seeking to purify myself? Is it because I want to be known as a righteous, virtuous, pious believer? Do I want people to talk about my stories in the future? Do I want to attain karamat and miracles? Or am I doing it because I want Allah? And Allah is sufficient for me. To purify your intention. Which is again in Surah Al-Fatiha. Where Allah says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ In fact, He commands us to say, You alone we worship and you alone we beseech. The third condition is to make dua for guidance because we already said this is not an endeavor that you can strive in unassisted. It's not a goal you can accomplish alone. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ The dua comes, guide us to the straight path. And the fourth condition, dear brothers and sisters, is the same as what you must what you must, uh, 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 what you must have for all of the sciences of the religion. You need a teacher. You cannot do it on your own. And your teacher must have qualities. And those qualities are knowledge. Those qualities are uh, 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 to have a sound reputation, sound character, and adherence to the Messenger wasallam. Because we're not looking for alternative lifestyles which are being offered to us online. We're looking for something consistent. And that consistency is that unbroken chain of knowledge and wisdom from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the teacher. And so Allah Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala tells us, Surat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim. Guide us to the straight path. Okay, which path? Surat al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim. The path of those whom you have bestowed favor. And who are those whom Allah has bestowed favor on? He has bestowed favor upon an nabiyyin the prophets, was siddiqeen the truthful, was shuhada the martyrs, was salihin the righteous. Those are the ones whom have, who have received favor. Now, of course, we don't live with a prophet among us. But the heirs of the prophet, the inheritors of the prophet are among us. The, the, the scholars whom the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the scholars are the heirs of the prophets. The prophets bequeathed neither dinar or dirham bequeathing only knowledge. What did the prophets leave behind, including the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Knowledge. فَمَنْ أَخَذَ بِهِ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ or فَمَنْ أَخَذَهُ أَخَذَ بِحَظٍ وَافِرٍ And so whoever takes from it, from that knowledge, has taken an abundant share. And so the greater the portion that scholar has, the stronger your adherence must be to that scholar. My dear brothers and sisters, the path to Allah is not impossible. It's not an impossible one to traverse, but we have made it difficult for ourselves because we've tried to DIY it. Nothing of value is sought that way. You don't self-teach yourself engineering. It's not accomplishable. That is not how it is done. And so Allah's happiness is the most worthy pursuit. 
and requires the most effort and requires the most guidance. And so make dua with sincerity and start your journey without haste for none of us knows when their time will end. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على خير الأنام فإن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه ثم بكم أيها المؤمنون فقال جل من قائل إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعلي بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة